Welcome to Flying Magazine's first virtual event. I'm really excited to have you here. I am here with Ron Gunderson, the VP of Sales, Marketing, Customer Support at Piper. Ron, it has been, for the past 18 months, it has been a crazy time, not just in aviation, but broadly. But I'm curious, how have things been for Piper over the last couple of months? I think we're pretty typical on what the industry saw, both from an OEM standpoint and then the general market activity uh, that we're all now familiar with. No one saw COVID coming. Uh, it kind of came on gradually. Uh, then we started seeing issues with supply chain uh, availability and whatnot and a general downturn. At Piper, we fared fairly well. Uh, we were at about a thousand employees, a little more than that when COVID hit, let's say. Uh, we had some attrition that we allowed to flow down, but we had no layoffs. Uh, we were early adopters of the protocols that the, uh, the CDC recommended, OSHA and everything. Uh, volumes came down a little bit in 2020 uh, into 2021, uh, but we see the market recovering very strongly now. Again, we didn't have any layoffs. Uh, we were able to deliver the aircraft to the customers. And now 2021's upon us, just like we didn't see any COVID coming, uh, the tremendous uptick that we're all experiencing now, no one really saw that coming uh, either. So we're all dealing with that. So Ron, what is driving the demand? Is this related to just people? Uh, obviously, there's a backlog of uh, getting planes produced because of supply chain issues you talked about. But is there a shift in how people are viewing private aviation? Is that what you're seeing right now? Yeah, I think the answer, the quick answer is yes. We look at uh, our Piper markets as two distinct markets. We have the trainer aircraft, uh, the new Pilot 100i, the Archer, and the Seminole, and we have the M-Class aircraft, two, different, two specific different segments. Uh, on the trainer market, it impacted the trainers initially as, I mean, the, the need for pilots is out there. Uh, coming into COVID, both Boeing and CAE, uh, we're looking at 26 to 30,000 pi pi new pilots needed a year. Uh, that went down during COVID, but now it's coming back in gangbusters. Uh, that coupled with the fact that all the old trainers that have been out there from the 70s and 80s and whatnot are all turned into pop cans and other aluminum products. So those used aircraft aren't out there. So the demand for uh, people traveling again with the demand for pilot retirements, with the demand for old trainers not being there, our trainer demand is going through the roof right now. On the other side, on the M-Class side, the traditional owner, pilot, family, business flying with the whole airline thing going away for a while and the dependency and the need and desire to continue to travel and do it safely, it's hit all segments of the general aviation market space. Our M-Class aircraft could almost be considered on the lower end all the way up through the, the large business jets. All those segments now are taking off because of that need and the desire for private aircraft travel away from the airlines. Now, is, it, is the desire to travel privately driven by health considerations, or is it that people, the economy is doing exceptionally well, and people now are appreciating the ability to be in a plane where they'll take the trips, they don't have to presume and other sort of virtual conferences take trips unless they're absolutely necessary, but now they can take those trips that are really important. Is that is that what's driving some of this? Yeah, I think it, it, it's almost kind of a double whammy thing. I mean, the the, the, the convenience and, and the ease of travel and private aviation, whether that be the owner pilot, whether it be the charter market, whether it be fractional, whether it be the per seat mile programs, that's always been known from a convenience standpoint. I think uh, COVID was a real eye opener, uh, if you will, when it came to the health aspects of it. Uh, in some ways, it's always been healthy because it's more relaxed to travel privately, but then actually from uh, what germs are out there and, and, and masking and social distancing and whatnot, those factors, uh, it really uh, put a little bit of gas on that fire, if you will, uh, about the benefits for private air travel. So the convenience factor has always been known, uh, and, and that working its way down from ownership to fractional to per seat mile programs has been known, but COVID struck a chord with uh, doing it in a more safe manner uh, and doing with people that, you know, you're familiar with next to you, whether those be business or family. Uh, and it's really helped our markets. It, I think it does help you evaluate or force you to sort of evaluate your own travel. I mean, I, even being a pilot prior to COVID, I was putting, you know, I had 
diamond status and platinum status on all on two different airlines. And the thing is that it was always for flying private was always sort of viewed as a luxury. We, my wife and I would sort of charter a couple times a year, but now it even having conversations with investors is there's a much higher level of support and encouragement to take to private because of the amount of time that you can do in a private plane and the amount of time it saves you versus flying commercial. It's just a completely different perspective. And I'm wondering if that is a, in your view, is that a permanent shift in how the perception of private aircraft is? It, 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 I do believe it's a permanent shift and there's, a nab- there's an, an enabler in there as well. The enabler is that there's some ex- technology has been an enabler in that and expectations have come down a little bit. Again, when we used to think of private air travel, it was it was the large business de- jets, the, the Gulf Streams, the large Bombardiers, the Dassault's, uh, or even then working down into to lighter jets. Now we're talking about uh, with the Wheels Up programs uh, and other per seat mile programs, the availability of that private air travel is working its way down. Uh, I'm not going to say the food chain or the aircraft type, uh, but people's expectations are I can get the convenience uh, and the ease of traveling in private air travel without chartering a jet. I can do that with one seat uh, in a single engine turboprop uh, for for the same convenience factor uh, with that, the large aircraft. So, I mean, it, it's kind of working from and technology allows that too. Uh, comfort level with having one pilot up front, like with our M600 SLS that's got the halo system with auto land capability in case something happens to the pilot. There's a whole bunch of things working towards more people uh, flying privately. And and the traditional OEM is just one aspect of that. I mean, do you think this is permanent? Are we going to see a permanent shift in the market where, you know, over the last couple of decades, there's been a lot of pressure on OEMs just because of, you know, the, the private market has been has, has been relatively tight. Do we think that this is going to create a level of new interest and investment in private aviation? Uh, and this is sort of the moment where the reacceleration and redemand is starting? I, th- I think so. Um, and we're seeing it coming from, another, and I'm going to come back to technology again, and automation, uh, as well as uh, power plant technology in, electric and hybrid and whatnot. So you have you have the desire and the expectation of being able to travel privately more. You also have technology coming in, into that and you can see it with all the EV toll air taxi models out there. And it's not quite there yet. Uh, it always works a little bit faster than it can, no matter what the technology is. Uh, it, someday it's gonna be like the Jetsons with the EV tolls and whatnot flying from uh, you know, city to city and, and inner city and whatnot. Uh, it's going to take a while for the FAA to get caught up with all that, the, the regulations, the airspace. Uh, but it is really a reflection point that we're in right now. And it's interesting that it comes right after a pandemic that all these things are coming together. It's still going to be a little gestation period here, uh, but there is definitely something new that's happening out there and new technology is going to drive that. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a renaissance happening. I and mean, it's one of the reasons, you know, I had the chance to buy Fly Magazine was, because I think this, in many ways, is going to go through a massive renaissance. It'll be a level of reinvestment, whether it's electric propulsion, some of the automated systems, like what Garmin has come out with, and just the overall renaissance uh, that we're seeing. Uh, it just It's an exciting time for everybody in aviation. But one thing that has struck me that I keep hearing and talking to a lot of people is the lack of pilots and the lack of younger people entering the market. How do we solve for that? How do we get younger people to look at aviation as a not only a a lifestyle choice but also a career choice i think from a lifestyle choice that's something that's got, that is happening uh by itself uh and by that it, it comes back to the expectation of being able to go from point a to point b in a safe uh efficient uh uh, manner in which either I'm flying the vehicle or I, the individual, am flying the vehicle or somebody else is, or it may be remote. And that's that spectrum that we just talked about. When it comes to getting people excited about being in aviation, I think uh, a lot of the technology that we're seeing, uh, a lot of avionics that make it easier to fly these airplanes and safer, uh, as well as I think there's going to be just from the demand side, from uh, 
professional pilot standpoint, the retirements that are taking place now and that need and, and the compensation that will come up uh, with uh, being, choosing a profession uh, as a professional pilot uh, might interest the young people as well. I mean, there, there's going to be a, uh, a compensation aspect of this that, that will drive them as well. I mean, and the numbers, are, like I said earlier, are, are out there with CAE forecasts and the Boeing forecast, 26 to 30,000 pilots going to be needed a year. Uh, so it, it definitely is exciting. You said you're seeing, you guys are seeing a level of younger people do it for lifestyle choices. That seems like that's a, a new developing story. Is that what you're, you're experiencing? Yeah, basically. Um, when, and we see that too. We came out with a new aircraft two years ago called the Pilot 100. It's a trainer aircraft. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a value trainer, if you will, uh, fully IFR equipped with a digital autopilot for $300,000. Uh, that aircraft is driving demand both from the personal side, but also from the flight school side. I mentioned earlier that a lot of the aircraft that were used for trainers have, have finally reached their age limit. Uh, so there's a lot of, with the, the pilot demand that's out there, uh, the training schools needed uh, needed aircraft to fly. Uh, and a lot of the smaller mom and pop type flight schools, not the big university programs, needed a new trainer uh, that they could trust, that it was easy to operate, that uh, cost per hours were low, uh, and they're choosing the Pilot 100i. And we're sold out of that aircraft all the way. We're selling into 2023 right now. So there's a huge demand uh, pent up for those types of types of aircraft, and whether it's for training or for personal use. When we think about the sort of the future of the industry, we think about in a five, ten years out. What is the most exciting technology that that you're most bullish on, or Piper's most bullish on, and what it will mean for the industry. This this industry is 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 a, a recording that goes over over again. OEMs make a huge investment in an airframe, uh, and from then on, it's engines, avionics, and interiors that are that, that go in and out of that huge investment, that huge air vehicle platform that the OEM uh, uh, t- makes the investment into. What, what's exciting right now are two of those engines, avionics, interior, both avionics and engine technology. Uh, again, a tip of the iceberg is our Halo Autoland system in the M600 SLS. Uh, that automation is going to work its way down into aircraft, uh, both below it and above it. At the same time, it's going to blend that automation technology into some of the new uh, EV toll things that are going to be in the future. Uh, but those EV toll aircraft are powered by hybrid engines. So again, we have engines and avionics. Both of, we're on the cutting edge of, of, of new technology in both those areas. It's going to make the airplanes easier and safer to operate, uh, and with less qualifications, if you will, until eventually it'll be automatic that you won't need a pilot license to fly these airplanes. So, the, as you said earlier, these are really exciting times uh, on many fronts. The demand for personal travel, and the technologies that enable it in both avionics, safety, automation, as well as engine technology with electric and hybrid. Yeah, it, I've been around aviation since I was 13 years old. It is, this is a renaissance, and I don't think a lot of, it's sort of the broader awareness uh, outside of the aviation industry, I don't think is really there. So it's, it is an exciting time. It feels very early. i got to ask you before we go. What is your favorite Piper aircraft? If you could take one home off the factory floor, what would that be? Of course, you can't do that, but let's say that you could. Yeah, I, I and I and thank you for asking that question. Um, I've been I'm a student of this industry. I've been in my entire life, uh, 35 years now, uh, and this is a wonderful place to be. I, I love working for a great American brand and and one that it, that it means quality uh, and value, and really everybody can fly a Piper. My favorite airplane is the, just the PA-46 family in general. Uh, starting with the 1985 Malibu, uh, the high-performance six-passenger pressurized retractable gear twin turboprop. It's the ultimate piston aircraft all the way up to our M600 SLS now. Uh, $3 million auto, auto land, uh, 270 knots, uh, 1,500 nautical miles. Uh, just a wonderful machine. That whole PA-46 platform. It's one of those huge investments that was made by Piper, and throughout the years, it's grown with engines, avionics, and interiors, uh, and it's just, uh, it, it was respected when it came out in 1984, 85, and it's still respected today. So I love being part of that brand, 
uh, and that, that aircraft platform. So you would get a fleet of these? For different oh, I, think, I think everybody should have a fleet of these. Fair enough. Well, Ron, appreciate your time today. Really excited that you're part of our first Flying Magazine's first virtual event, and uh, we hope to have you back. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. Be happy to come back anytime.